One of the most important times in our lives was at the end of 17 years of Esa Pekka Salon and being the music director of the Los Angeles Philharmonic. And we wanted to do something very special in his last concert. And, you know, as you know, most conductors do the Mahler Eighth Symphony and have their Symphony of a Thousand and be the biggest blowout in the world. Esa Pekka was far more ecologically minded. <laughs> and he wanted to make something that was powerful, but thoughtful. And I spoke with Peter Sillers and, and he said, well, how about doing this? Uh, uh, a staged um, version of Oedipus and Symphony of Psalms. Um, and that would be a worthy <laughs> way, way to say goodbye, or at least bye for now. Um, and I thought it was a great idea. Oedipus Rex tells a painful, you know, unbearable story. And that's not where Sophocles let the story end. Sophocles, when he was 80 years old, at the end of his life, wrote a further play called Oedipus at Colonus, where this man spends a period in exile as a refugee, and he goes through five countries. No country will let him stay. Finally, in one country, he's given a refuge in a sacred grove of trees, and, and Stravinsky, of course, was a, a refugee all his life. He was in, he had to learn five languages, he had to constantly go from country to country and uh, find a place to, to, to live. And this is part of the strange Stravinsky mythology of why he wrote these pieces about refugees. The idea of homelessness and, and uh, not being able to go back to one's own home country, hometown, was of course a, a powerful thing already then, but now of course it's, it's it's such a central problem, such such a central tragedy in in today's world, uh, and the dimensions of this crisis uh, is beyond our imagination, even eight years ago. So I think the message of this um, is even more powerful than ever before. And you realize every once in a while classical music is nice, but. Every once in a while, it's more than that. It gives you, it speaks to something that nothing else can speak to. That a press conference of politicians, you know, continuing the war on terror just doesn't do it. And we need some kind of human response and some kind of spiritual response. And Igor Stravinsky goes there. We repeated the production last summer in aix en provence and then we did a concert version of this or semi-staged version of the same production in london um, with the same swedish choruses actually um, which were completely spectacular every everybody was uh, beside themselves this is the the most elaborate staging i've ever made for a chorus uh in my life and i've i've done this piece in you know with with choruses you know in different parts of the world Orfe Drangar is in a completely different category. <laughs> this, this group of people is incredible. And from our very first rehearsals, it was like, what is happening here? This is just an astonishing explosion of intelligence, emotion, intensity, and precision. It was just astonishing. It's one of the most personal things I've, I've done. Uh, one of the most personal things I've brought to the festival, in a way, because it it's such a big part of my my history, um, and and also Stravinsky is one of the most cent central composers in my life. Anyway, people like to say, "Oh, the arts are something extra; we don't really need them." And you want to say, "No, no, everything else is extra. <laughs> what you actually need is to come back to who you are." and what you really are, and what you stand for, and what we all care about actually together. And, and, and then everything else can follow. But first we have to know where we are, and know who we are. And Oedipus Rex is that big question of literally, who are you? You don't even know. That's overwhelming. <laughs>